Rub up your engines! Colin Barrett says, Scotty, what do you think of Toyota's new hydrogen combustion engine? Okay, very interesting idea. You can run cars on hydrogen. The problem is, there isn't the hydrogen infrastructure to run the cars on. And you have to create it, that would be a gigantic, insane expense to build. Now, realize this, the car you are driving today can easily be converted to running on hydrogen. People have done that in the past, and some people still do it. The problem is, where are you going to get the hydrogen from? Hydrogen is already a gas, so you don't have to do anything except meter it into the engine, right? It's already a gas, you just need a metering system to meter it to run it. For example, my son here in Tennessee, he has one of those whole house generators and it runs on natural gas. So if the power goes out, it turns on and it runs a motor that runs a generator that powers this whole house. We got it set up to run on a natural gas that comes in a pipeline to the house, but it also has a carburetor on it. You could get a 20 gallon gas tank if you want and put it up there and run it with that carburetor. It's more efficient actually using natural gas and hydrogen is even more efficient. Any car can be made to run on hydrogen. It's just that there's no infrastructure for it. So, you know, it'll be a long time before anybody's going to create that. Daniel Malfi says, Scotty, I got an 04 Honda CRV five speed manual. Gets 14 miles a gallon. Other people get getting 24. I changed the PCV valve. Use a fuel cleaner and nothing. Okay, now, do you drive like a maniac peeling out burning rubber every time you shift? Reek, reek, reek. I mean, it could be you driving a vehicle. If not, that is horrendous gas mileage for a Honda CRV. They should get 23 to 30, right? Especially on a highway. First thing you want to do is take it on a trip, 100 miles. Fill it up on a gas station next to the highway. Drive 100 miles, fill it up again. See what you're getting on the highway. If you're getting 20 something miles a gallon on the highway, then you're just driving it too fast. Now, if you're still getting crappy mods, then you got a problem. Maybe the brakes are dragging. Maybe a fuel injector is leaking. You can do stuff like pull out the spark plug. If one's black and the rest aren't black, that injector's shot. Or that cylinder's worn out and you can do a compression test. There's a lot of tests you can do. But first, take it on the road, go 60 miles an hour for 100 miles. And if your gas mods is normal, then it's just the way you're driving. I've seen that so many times in the past. Make your head spin. Jay says, what are your thoughts on the 2021 Buick Encore all-wheel drive? I bought it new. Did I make a good decision in your opinion? Well, I would buy a Buick product, but they're not great vehicles, but they're not bad. And if you want to look at it, look at your VIN number. And by the VIN number, you can tell. In this case, you actually want it made in China. Some of those that are sold in the United States are made in China and they're actually made better. So if you find out the first number of the VIN tells you where it's made. Look it up, look in your car on the door jam, it'll, the VIN number will be right there. Then just Google what does this number mean and it'll tell you what country it's made. And if it's made in China, it's better than the ones made here. John Robinson says, Scotty, do you recommend getting a 2021 Nissan Titan? Now they say they're going to stop making them after the 2024 model, but I just did a video on Nissan Titan. A guy brought me one. I can't understand why they failed because they're excellent trucks. Big V8 engines, they last a long time. Now they're tremendous gas hogs. Every single car out there with a V8 engine is a tremendous gas hog. And you can't beat it because they're big heavy vehicles. Take Toyota, the Toyota Tundra for years. V8, great, runs forever. Everybody loves them. Then Toyota decided last year, we're not going to put V8s. We're only going to put in twin turbo V6. Well, a guy brought me a brand new Toyota Tundra. Twin turbo V6 with hybrid on it. The hybrid battery, right? To get a better gas mileage. On a highway, he was still only getting 19 miles a gallon. So, so much for going from the V8. Yeah, maybe the V8 got 17. Now it gets 19. Big deal. You're hardly saving anything at all. A big truck is going to get bad gas mods. If you don't mind bad gas mods, there's nothing wrong with a Nissan Titan. They're well made. They just couldn't compete with Fords and Rams and GM because Nissan's not really a truck company and they didn't put all the bells and whistles and magic talking tailgates like Ford and GM and Ram, right? So they didn't sell them. I think last year they sold 15,000 of them or something. But they're great trucks. There's nothing wrong with them other than they get horrendous gas mileage. Richard Sell says, I want to buy a fast SUV that's reliable, not too expensive. What do you recommend? I recommend you change your mind. A fast SUV. SUVs, everybody wants them, the fast ones, even more so, and they cost a fortune for a good one. End of story.
There's no if, ands, or buts about it. You're not going to get one that isn't super expensive if it's decent. Take Toyotas, okay? Toyotas, Hondas. Their SUVs cost a lot of money because they last a really long time. Now, if you're talking used, you can get a Ford Explorer, you can get a Chevy Tahoe and stuff used, and it might be relatively fast, but it isn't going to be reliable if it's got more than 120,000 miles. With the Toyotas, the Hondas will go two, three, four hundred thousand miles. The problem is you're looking at what's popular, you're going to pay up the nose. That's just how it goes. I would change my mind if I were you. I'd get a sedan. You can get good sedans a lot cheaper. Not SUVs. Everybody wants them. The prices are insane. John Smith said, are there any good alternatives to OEM Toyota wheelbase? There are, but you really got to price around. Now, I understand. You get a Toyota hub assembly with a bearing. It might be 500 bucks. And then you look on uh, eBay or Amazon, you see, I can get one of these wheel bands for $29.99. All right, they do make them for $29.99. As a matter of fact, I am now testing one out, and I have a feeling it's going to wear out before 10,000 miles, where the original one went 120,000. This one's wearing out probably at 10,000 miles. Chinese stuff, a lot of it is absolute crap. You have to do research, see where the stuff is made. But I would not buy the $29.99 a piece Chinese made ones because they all wear out too fast. They're poorly made and they do not hold up over time. Max Shotgun says, I got a 99 Honda Accord. I feel the car wobbles. I accelerate past 30 miles an hour. Past 30. That's generally a speed wobble. Simplest thing, go to a tire store and say, I want all my four wheels balanced. That should fix your problem. If it doesn't, then it's going to have to go further. You're going to have to see, are the tie rods worn? When you pull the tire, does it go clunk a clunk? They'd be worn tie rods. If you pull them at the top, if it goes clunk a clunk, that's the lower ball joint that's going out. There's a lot of worn parts that can make you shake. But if it doesn't start shaking until you're over 30, it usually means your wheels need to be balanced or replaced. If your tires are so bad that the belt's broken or they're so worn, out that they're going to shake because half the tire is bald and it's got tread and you can never balance it correctly, then you have to buy new tires. But start with getting them balanced. Look at them. They got a lot of tread, get them balanced. But I mean, if they're all worn out and cupped and the tread's down to nothing, you know, you're supposed to put a penny in, you see the top of Lincoln's head, then you know, okay, well, it's too thin, but if it covers them up, he's okay. Well, look at that first. You might just need new tires. The Carson kid said, I got a 316,000 mile 05 TDI diesel Jetta, still gets 52 miles a gallon of highway. Why do you think they're pushing electrics and hybrids when good gas mods has been around for years? Why do you think? Because they want to make money and sell you new vehicles that fall apart faster and cost a lot of money so they can make even more profit. Wouldn't the manufacturers love it if everybody went out and bought an electric car? In eight or 10 years, if the battery goes bad, take a Tesla. And some of those cost $20,000 to have the battery replaced. And even the cheaper ones, it can be $10,000, $12,000. They love it. They get $10,000, $12,000 from you every eight, 10 years or sooner when the battery goes bad, when it's out of warranty, right? So of course, that's why they're pushing that stuff because there's money involved in it. Those Volkswagen diesels got phenomenal gas mileage for ages. You know, I mean, they failed mainly because Americans don't like the smell of diesels. They're smaller cars. Americans want bigger cars. They want once they have more acceleration, you don't fit in with the average American, but those are excellent cars and they do get good gas mileage. You got 316,000 miles. I got a friend in Toronto, in Canada. He's got 350,000 on his TDI. He loves it. So, you know, they are. They're good cars. There's nothing wrong with them. But the reason they're going to hybrids and electric because they're so complex and when they break, they can make so much money fixing them or people just say, oh, geez, they want 20 grand to fix my car. Oh, I'll go buy another one. And they'd love it if you bought another car too. Here's mechanic says, Scotty, do you recommend getting a two-stroke dirt bike. Well, they're all four-stroke now for anti-pollution reasons, but two-strokes weigh less and they have more power. And of course, they smell. Ring, ding, 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 ring, ding, ding, because you're mixing oil with the gasoline and they burn the oil to lubricate the engine. It doesn't have oil in the bottom in a sump that lubricates it. It's all by the gasoline with oil mixed with it. They're dirtier, they're smellier, but they have more horsepower. And there's millions of two-stroke dirt bikes. You want one that's got a lot of power. There's plenty of them out there. Just realize it's not a four-stroke motor. Motorcycle. It's a two-stroke. So every so often, you're going to have to tear the whole engine apart, clean all the carbon, and put it all back together again. Daniel Vargas says, Scotty, how you doing? I got a Jeep Laredo Grand Cherokee 2004. I want to know if there's a way to clean the evaporator without removing the whole dashboard. Well, here's the problem. The refrigerant goes towards the evaporator. Then the expansion valve or the orifice tube is a tiny restriction, and then it's sprayed in the evaporator to make cold air. If you can remove the expansion valve, the orifice tube that those have, and then the other end of the 
the hose coming out of the evaporator, yes, you can flush it on the car. But you got to take either the expansion valve, some are expansion valves, and some have orifice tubes. You got to get that out of the way before you can flush the thing. If you can get that out of the way, you can flush it. Yes, indeed. But some of them, it's such a pain in the butt to get that off. If you got to take the whole dash apart, it, it doesn't make any sense. You might as well just replace the evaporator. You're going to pay a mechanic. On some of those Jeeps, it's a thousand dollar labor to remove the evaporator. So if you got to remove it to get to the expansion valve, you might as well just buy another evaporator. The evaporators don't cost that much aftermarket. It's the labor of putting them in. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.